I'm Mark Kelly, and Mr. Saltwater Tank, come and show me half of saltwateraquarium.com. Hang around any saltwater tank hobbyist, Facebook group, or forum long enough, and you're gonna hear the term nutrient export. Now it is what it sounds like, getting nutrients out of your system. There's lots of ways to do it with water change, carbon dosing, or by using algae, which is usually done in a refugium. Refugiums can work well for nutrient reduction, but you need a sizable one to make a dent in your nutrients. On my thousand gallon reef, my refugium is 60 inches long, by 16 inches wide. Now some people are asking, well how many gallons is that? It's not so much about gallons with refugiums, it's about surface area because that's where the algae grows, that's where you're going to get your nutrient reduction. So on my thousand gallon reef, 60 by 16 inches gets the job done. But most people don't have near that kind of space for a refugium. So some sump manufacturers have started to add a refugium section in the sump. This is something, but it's not really going to do much. This is much like strapping an outboard motor onto a cruise ship and going, we're not really getting anywhere. So you need a big refugium to be effective. If you don't have the space and you want that refugium pump, what do you do? Well, that's where the algae reactor comes in. It is a great space-saving effective solution. Here's what an algae reactor looks like. This is the Geo Algae Reactor. It's got a couple of features on it that I really like. First of all, it has valves, two valves, on the top. One on the end and one on the outs. When it comes time to service the reactor, close down these valves, you're not going to be leaking water out of the reactor or pumping water on the floor from the feed pump. That's going to keep the area around your tank nice and clean and you don't have to deal with any spills. Now when do you service an algae reactor? Well, when it's full of algae because when it's full of algae, the algae isn't growing anymore and it's not uptaking any nutrients. So how do we know when it's full of algae? Well, you could take the lid off and work, but Geo said, no, that's, that doesn't make any sense. Simply pop off the light that's on the side of the reactor and we can look down into the reactor and see how much algae has grown in here. We say, all right, it's full. We need to export the algae. We need to get it out of there. Or you know what? Let's keep it growing. In which case we just put the light back in the channel, pop it in. It's held nice and secure. And two lights are going to grow more algae than one, giving more nutrient exports. So the geology reactor has two lights on it. When it does come time, to export the algae out of your algae reactor, keep this in mind. You don't want to pull it all out at once or take out 90% of it because then your nutrients are going to rise because there's not enough algae to uptake those nutrients. So, if you has a nice feature of this, it has a divider here in the center of it. So you can leave the bottom part and just take out the top algae here to restart the algae reactor, so to speak, to get that growth going again. So you don't have to take the whole thing out or try to somehow pull it all apart, making a big mess, just take the algae out of the top, drop it back down in here, turn on your valves, get everything back and going, and you're ready to go. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this algae reactor is you cannot submerge it in your sump. It's gotta sit next to your sump or sit on top of it due to the lights sitting next to it. Now, here's another feature that I really like. It may seem small, but it makes a big difference. Both lights on the algae reactor are driven by one power source. So I only need one power break underneath my tank to run this thing. Now some people say, well, that's not a big deal. Well, it is when you start getting lots and lots of power breaks and plugs around your tank. One plug is going to drive this algae reactor from Geo. Okay, so that's what an algae reactor looks like. You know how it works. What kind of nutrient export should we actually expect out of this thing? Let's go put it on a tank and see what kind of results we get. I installed the Geo algae reactor on a 260 gallon reef tank that's six years old and is medium stock. The fish are all sizable and they get fed frozen food twice a day. This tank has no refugium, it isn't running any phosphate absorbing media and gets zero water changes. Oh by the way, that hammer coral is over 20 years old and started the size of a baseball. Now it's nearly 24 inches across and it's gulping down alkalinity and calcium. The Geo Algae Reactor was installed on top of the sump as remember it cannot be submerged. It's fed with a Cichet Synchro Silent 3.0 pump. Cichet is my go-to choice of feed pumps and I also use them for return pumps in low head situations. Using a hand and nitrate and phosphate tester, the base nitrate reading was 13.4 parts per million and the phosphate came in at 0.07 parts per million. A baseball sized clump of Chato was added to the Geo Reactor and we'll measure nitrates and phosphates twice a week and report back results. Mm -hmm. 